In the depths of the Pacific Ocean, a metallic beast rouses the murky sediment of the ocean floor. This is the world's first interstellar hook, designed and deployed by the controversial Harvard physicist Avi Loeb. It is on the hunt for alien material, and it may have found something that doesn't resemble anything from this world. Welcome to Lab 360, it's time to explore. The year is 2014. A guest from beyond our solar system is earthbound, and we have absolutely no idea about its arrival. Back on our planet, life is going on as usual when the meteor enters our atmosphere, ignites in a fireball in the skies and crashes into the ocean off the coast of Papua New Guinea. The object isn't all that big, just a meter or so across, but its significance is massive. An interstellar material delivered to Earth, that lies dormant in the depths of our waters. But extracting it wouldn't be easy because proving that the object is in fact, interstellar, would take a lot of effort. However, it makes up for quite a fascinating story. So the Earth receives up to 50 metric tons of meteors every day, and most of that burn up in the atmosphere, but the ones that don't burn up, are no bigger than a pebble, and that's why pose no threat to life. But what is so special about this one from 2014? You see, what is so notable about this meteor is the very high speed and unusual direction at which it encountered our planet. But if no one saw it coming, then how do we know it was coming at us in high speed? Well, sensors on a classified US government satellite designed to detect foreign missile launches were the sole known witnesses to the fireball. And when scientists calculated its trajectory and speed, they realized that it had come from interstellar space. Hmm, unusual high speed and direction of a space rock. Does it remind you of something else? If Oumuamua comes to your mind, then you are not alone. What is amazing here, is that the information about the asteroid was not immediately made public by the government. It took two men, Avi Loeb and Amir Siraj, three years to have the government accept the origin of the interstellar object and make it public. The story starts in April 2019, when Avi Loeb was eight months into the study of data of Oumuamua, which was then considered to be the first interstellar visitor to the solar system. Now here is an information that you would want to hold on to, Oumuamua was traveling through our solar system at a blistering speed of 87.3 km per second. At Earth's distance from the Sun, any object moving faster than about 42 km per second, is too speedy to be captured by the Sun's gravity. Anything traveling faster than this local celestial speed limit, may come from, and if unobstructed, should return to, interstellar space. Having studied Oumuamua, Harvard professor Avi Loeb knew that there must be other interesting objects in NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies catalog, and approached his student Amir Siraj with it. Within days, Siraj had identified the 2014 meteor as a potential interstellar meteor candidate, as the object had a speed closer to 60 km per second before entering Earth. This was going to change everything. If the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies data, which composed of independently verified data from the scientific community, were correct, the meteor would dethrone Oumuamua to become the first interstellar object to visit our solar system. Thanks to a partnership between the Department of Defense and NASA, three years later, in 2022, the meteor was officially announced to be the first known object originating from outside our solar system. And its fragments are buried deep inside our waters. Fascinating, isn't it? Well, that's what Professor Loeb thinks too. In fact, he believes that the object might be a piece of alien technology, and that's why he planned an expedition to retrieve the object from the floor of the Pacific Ocean. And guess what? He did exactly that. Using a magnetic sled, his team found 50 tiny iron sphere-shaped fragments, which he said must have been from a natural environment, different from the solar system, or an extraterrestrial technological civilization. Air friction burst IM-1, as the object was named, into flames in mid-air, as it hurtled towards Earth, leaving a trail of molten iron rain droplets in its wake, on January 8th of that year. Uh, my name is Avi Loeb, I'm a professor of science at Harvard University, and right now, I'm in the Pacific Ocean, about uh, 100 kilometers off uh, Manus Island in Papua New Guinea, where uh, I'm on a scientific expedition to retrieve the relics of the first 
recognized interstellar meteor. Uh, that was the first object that humanity identified as coming from outside the solar system. From analyzing this data, we concluded that it's actually tougher. It has material strength that is higher than all the space rocks that were cataloged by NASA. And uh, that uh, makes it quite unusual. Why would the first object from outside the solar system be tougher than iron meteorites and move fast of all stars in the vicinity of the sun? And of course, a possibility is that it's artificial. It's a spacecraft that has uh, propulsion and that may explain why the material is so strong. He has not dismissed the notion that these mysterious iron remnants from IM-1 could be the first hard evidence of a spacecraft from an extraterrestrial technological civilization to crash land on our planet. Roughly two dozen people, including scientists with Harvard's Galileo Project Expedition, the ship's crew and documentary filmmakers chronicling the endeavor, set sail from the island town of Lorengau on June 14th on board the Silver Star. To this meteor which we call IM-1 for interstellar meteor 1, uh, we found spherules. These are roughly spherical particles that uh, are a fraction of a millimeter in size and they were simply melt molten droplets. Um, the fireball released a few percent of the Hiroshima atomic bomb energy and uh, into a, a half a meter sized object um, and so uh, it got really hot. The surface melted and uh, what we can find are the small droplets that rained down on the Pacific Ocean on the 8th of January 2014 when this happened. The amazing thing is we are talking about these uh, spherules, these fragments that are uh, only one milligram in mass, each of them. And uh, altogether we have, uh, by now, the count is uh, 38. So we have 25 or so milligrams uh, of those particles. Uh, and re it's remarkable that we were able to retrieve them from the ocean floor because uh, there is a huge body of water that we are serving, roughly 10 kilometer in size region, and um, we are going uh, deeper than a mile in some location. Um, and uh, what we are using is a magnetic sled uh, that I will show you, uh, basically a sled fu uh, full of magnets that we drag on the ocean floor and scoop the top of layer of uh, the ocean and uh, uh, floor and, and then we collect those fragments, we were able to retrieve them. And but whether the object proves to be intelligently crafted or naturally made, Loeb said that his group's physical recovery of material from outside our solar system is already historical and successful. Back at the lab, Loeb and his team will determine what the atomic elements and isotopes from IM-1's crash debris might reveal about the interstellar object's place of origin, or perhaps even its alien makers. This has never been done before, Loeb said. We never received a package at our doorstep from a cosmic neighbor. This could be the first time humans put their hands on interstellar material. What do you guys think? Drop in your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.